Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be with you today. Um, my name is Natalia Nikesh, and I'm the Disability Services Officer at Central European University. Um, going to be Disability Rights Officer as of August 1st. And I'm just very happy that I'm not alone representing uh, CEU, but I have Caitlin here with me. It's such a delight. Um, in terms of pronouns, uh, it's she and her. I'm a woman in my 50s, in case you can't see me, with white complexion, brown hair, um, wearing glasses. Um, and based on what you put in the chat, you probably know a lot more about inclusion and diversity than I do. Uh, but whenever I talk about these terms, I think it's 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 wise to to try and uh, and define it. In you know, it's they are popular words, and and uh, when it comes to talking about institutional culture, uh, creating a teaching and learning environment or a workplace environment in in the case of a university, then for me, inclusion refers to an environment that welcomes each community member. And diversity, in general, would refer to all aspects of human difference. Now, if we wanted to translate the terms of diversity and inclusion in the CEU context, um, I, what I could say is CEU is a very diverse institution with about 200 faculty members coming from 30 different countries and more than 18,000 alumni or students coming from 150 countries. Um, so that's one way of defining uh, diversity, diversity in the context of CU. And the other way is, is diversity is understood as, as an individual difference, uh, such as personality or life experiences in, in, in our context, um, race, ethnicity, class, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, country of origin, and ability or disability. And, and when we mean uh, inclusion, when we work with inclusion, then I would use the Clayton Peterson O'Neill Mussel uh, uh, definition, which works well in our context, the active, intentional, and ongoing engagement with diversity. So we try and engage uh, actively and intentionally uh, with each other and pursue excellence in CU teaching and research. Now, you may ask, how do we go about promoting inclusion in the CU context? Um, I think uh, we are trying to use a two-level approach, considering both the general level and the individual level. Um, I will only say a few words about the general level, and, and more of my talk will be on the individual level. Um, at the general level, I think there needs to be a deep understanding of the barriers our community members face. Um, we try to involve, uh, you know, management. Uh, we try to cooperate with human resources office uh, when it comes to employees. When uh, it comes to uh, students, then it's, it is the dean of students. Um, we created a, an accessibility group, a hub, to try and bring together students, faculty members, and staff members with disabilities and without disabilities to create and empower the community. And the members of this accessibility group um, can be consulted and advised on, our, on, on building our culture and, and on building formal regulations and less formal policies um, which can actually provide a legal framework for us to try and operate and observe everyone's right. And we are convinced that we need to carry out empirical research, um, which, which is uh, very important to map out needs of the community members and to allow the findings inform our practices and, and our plans for the future. Um, when it comes to um, research projects, just let me just mention one. The, the one uh, project that is ongoing now 
is uh, better education through long-term investment into inclusiveness and student and staff well-being, which is an Erasmus Plus cooperation partnership with the lead Comenius University in Bratislava. And that is to try, the aim is to try and enhance the sense of belonging of staff members and students in order to improve um, our environment and, and that of the participating institutions. So we try to address the issues uh, of well, uh, student and staff well-being, mental health, uh, especially in the case of this recent pandemic, and I'm not sure whether it's over, um, that, that was definitely brought to the uh, forefront. And we try to enhance inclusiveness in learning, teaching, and working together. So, so much about this, this project. Going back to um, the actual individual level, we try to work with the indiv individual uh, member of the community to identify any barriers that they are experiencing. And that is because of the, maybe the interplay between the environmental factors and any other barriers they are facing um, and the community members' strengths and weaknesses. So this interplay is put in the focus. And you may have read the progress report that I, I actually wrote. And I'm just, I just thought that I would give you an update on that. This is an onboarding project of a colleague on the autism spectrum. Um, and Luis, when we were preparing for today's meeting said, is there any way that our colleague could have uh, joined us? I'm sorry, he couldn't join us uh, today, but in the future, if you will have me later on, we can, uh, we can get the colleague to, to join in in one of our meetings. Um, that's possible. Um, so it's everything that was done included him in all the decisions. And we consulted um, our HRO office, our uh, the social ministry uh, representative um, and colleagues in the department that our, co our colleague on the spectrum uh, was working. Um, so this was a, a joint venture and I, nothing was done without him being uh, in, in this very project. Now, let me just say more words. That, that was sort of an in introduction. Um, the project started on October 1st. And ever since October 1st, the colleague has been working for our facilities office at the Vienna campus of Central European University. Um, altogether, this is more than 36 weeks. And the colleague um, on the autism spectrum is responsible for the inventory project. And, um, and he conducts the record management project on his own. And the progress on his work uh, was, can be followed through a, a shared Excel file, which is, um, which is done through the, the supervisor and, and the colleague, they are managing it together. And every time I have a meeting, I can get a, a close look at it. Now, if I look at the phases of the project, um, step one, we started off with a training that was arranged by the Austrian Ministry of Social Affairs. That was one day before uh, the actual work relationship started for the colleague. That was on September 30th, 2021. And I think the most of the work was uh, the preparation for the very first day to try and prepare well um, together with supervisor, HRO representative, all participants of the project were consulted and we tried to take it step by step um, I think um, what we did was we tried to notify everyone in the unit who would be working with the colleague and ask staff members to welcome the new colleague. Uh, we tried to uh, create a map and a draft chart uh, about the, the, the actual work and what the uh, job involved. Um, 
try to make sure that that there is a that the working hours were settled. The colleague is working from ten in the morning till fourteen hours, which is which is a part time um, contract um, with only half an hour lunch break. Um, and and uh, I think it was also when we tried to prepare, we planned uh, a journey through the the sites of the building so that the colleague would get more comfortable with um, with the buildings and the site. Um, we tried to have the policies, maps, charts printed by the time uh, the colleague arrived for the first day. Um, and we prepared a draft message, an email message that would go to all the, all the responsible coordinators of the relevant departments that we have a new colleague who has a disability. The colleague's job will be to prepare the inventory by going around the rooms and record all the furniture items and that he's highly intelligent, but his communication skills will be limited. And in case anybody has any questions, they can contact the supervisor or the disability services officer. So we gave them contact details. And then the probationary uh, time started. Um, I think there's several milestones that were achieved. Um, I will say a few words about those. I will also say about the responsibilities of each person in the, in the job, uh, the challenges uh, that we were facing and we tried to address. And, and finally, I would just wrap up if, if that's okay. I hope I'm not going too uh, far with the, um, with the time. So our, our goal was to welcome the colleague in the C community by designing uh, an inclusive workplace for him, try to make him familiar with all the setting. After a successful start, we actually managed to, to, have, to build a, a very effective relationship with the colleague. Uh, we took into consideration all the strengths. He's very highly intelligent, has skills, attention to the detail, very trustworthy, and demonstrates really, really, again, I'm emphasizing this great attention to detail. And, and the inventory project, this comes very, very uh, useful. And the colleague understands and carries out all the specific tasks and reports about uh, locations that he has been working on. So he has two files that he manages, one is all the rooms that he's going into, and the, the other one is recording all the items in each of the, the rooms he's working in. Um, I think um, the, the responsibilities of each employee and team member to try and help this process. Um, I think it's also a training for the community members. Um, it's, it's how to build our culture. The, the supervisor and the co-workers have really a very active part to play in this project. Um, the, this whole uh, project is a continuous training. We have a plan and, and through clear and easy pieces of communication, this is always uh, communicated. And we made sure that there are several rules that we apply, one of them is being direct and respectful when, whenever we're giving feedback. We don't joke, we don't do criticism or sarcasm. When, when we have our meetings, daily body checks, for example. Um, when you look at CU's culture, it relies heavily on communication skills. Um, so we needed to make sure that we have something in place for making sure that, that the colleague is, is comfortable with receiving uh, messages. So we made sure that we uh, delegated two people who would be con primary contact persons. One was the supervisor and the other one was myself. So we employed check meetings on, when we started the project, we had like five days, every day I would, uh, would meet with the colleague at 10 o'clock and then as, uh, the colleague grew more and more independent and his needs changed. 
we cut down on the on the number of meetings. So we had now we have like three times Monday, Wednesday, and Friday where we would meet the colleague. I would have an online meeting or sometimes in person meeting to talk about any challenges that the colleague would experience or email messages that he may need help to answer. Um, if you allow me, I would quickly share with you um, just a second. I would quickly share with you a a a diagram that we prepared when we started work with him. Um, have your sheet of inventory is ready and your pen. Uh, go to the office, knock on the door. Is there somebody in the room? Go in with your key. Um, yes, ask if you can come in. And if the person cannot go to the room, then he can um, have the, the, the movement to the next room. If the person can go in, he can measure all the items in the room, check whether then these items are listed, um, return to the desk, enter data from the sheet into the Excel file. So we try to simplify all the little movements that, that, we, that we thought the, the job included. Um, I'm sto I stopped sharing this, just uh, that was for trying to illustrate it. Now, going back to, um, to who is responsible for what. So we had our body meetings. Um, right now, based on our evaluation, these are being reduced to two times a week now. Um, we are not alone in this project. The, the representative of the ministry consults us, comes in and talks to the colleague. So it's, we have a feedback. It's not just us doing the work, but we are also being uh, controlled in a sense, quality controlled by the ministry representative. And also this works as a consultation uh, that we learn from each other, uh, that we are evaluating our experience and then go back and, and try to change if we see that something is not working. And that brings me to the challenges. Like, um, when, when it comes to people of the spectrum, they usually face challenges with communications, uh, verbal or nonverbal ones. And during the process of the work, there were situations when on entering the room, the colleague found it hard to communicate with the person in the room. It was proposed to the colleague that, that a simple question is enough when entering the room. Um, when can I come back? Um, Due to the pandemic, the colleague could not really um, practice this, but when the on-site operation returned, he could do more of this on-the-job communication training sessions. Um, during the process, also other difficulties emerged, like uh, there were discrepancies between the records of the rooms that the colleague visited and the data entered into the inventory file. Um, and then we sat down and we talked it over where uh, why this was happening, what happened, why some of the items were missing, and then we arranged some times to, to catch up, and the, and the, the colleague made very good progress. Um, another challenge that we experienced was due to the fire drill experience. A week before the drill, it was discussed what to expect on the day of the drill, what procedure the colleague would follow in the event of a, a possible fire, However, uh, the noise of the drill was so extremely loud that the colleague could not stand it um, until the scheduled time, but left the building. Um, I think the good point was that um, he left the building as we agreed via the stairs, but uh, much earlier than, than this was uh, scheduled. Now, when I asked the colleague about this experience, he rated it as bad as eight on a scale of 10. So there are certain things that even though we try to prepare very well, uh, they didn't go as well as planned. Now for the summer, we had different plans. We are continuing with the inventory, but instead of the offices, the colleague is uh, 
when he gets back from his holiday, he will be continuing it with the with the rooms, um, lecture rooms. Um, the if it, if I wanted to come and I tried to cut it very short to to uh, try and and sum it up, we can see that good progress was made. Why the colleague is progressing well with his work, it was also agreed. Uh, that that he has been improving his communication skills. Um, it, there, there was um, an incident when when we met a professor that the colleague knew, and he greeted the professor and asked her, asked the professor if um, she knew me. And that is the colleague was trying to introduce me to the professor, considering uh, the people on the script. Uh, spectrum usually face challenges with communications and interactions. We thought that this was very uh, a remarkable ex uh, achievement and experience. Now, really trying to wrap up, and then I'll give you the give the floor to questions. We try to use multiple sources to develop a comprehensive understanding based on pattern. A qualitative researcher triangulating with the colleagues. Uh, mother who, who reported that the colleague is very, ha very happy and quite confident in himself, which is very nice to watch. Um, and also with the supervisor's view that it's great work that has been delivered and it has been delivered consistently. Con consistently. And my own experience is also that the colleague didn't even want to go, wanted to go on holiday but wanted to come back to work instead because he's enjoying the system. He's enjoying the acknowledgement um, that he is receiving from us. And what I can say is that the colleague greatly benefits from CEU by increasing diversity in the institution, but also um, uh, I think we are benefiting. We are learning day by day. It's, it's a win-win situation. So the floor is yours now. I just want to make sure that you, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Natalia. Um, so really, really interesting um, process and, and talking it, it through in, in this specific example. Um, anyone got any questions before we go into breakouts? Jen? Yes, thank you for a um, super interesting talk. I, can I have two questions? Because the first one is quite quick. Um, and, I'm, and I apologize if I missed this, but it's not like the, the, the inventory that he's taking and, and doing this role. What sort of is the purpose of that sort of within the department? Because like when I think about, for example, my department at UCL, there wouldn't really be a need to inventory the rooms um so that and that kind of leads into like the next question of whether there was sort of resistance to it just because the way it sounds like it sounds sort of like oh this is what you know a 16 year old would do and they come in and they're they're having work experience and you're thinking what can we do to fill their hours um but you know and then so so there's some yeah so 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 can you just talk me me through that you know that a little bit thank you I think this all, thank you very much for your question. I think this all boils down to the special situation of CEU. We had a, a beautiful, uh, accessible building in Budapest. And, in, and due to the, the changes in the legislation, um, CEU was driven out from Budapest and we had to relocate in, in a very um, fast way to Vienna. And we have rented a building which is far from being accessible. It used to be a bank building and we knew uh, all the items that we bought to try and, and uh, put in the, into the rooms and the locations that we had. But it was done in a very fast and efficient manner. We knew what we bought, but no one knew where everything was. So we needed somebody who can take, um, you know, can really be trusted, can take monotonous work because 
we have a building of six stories um, with several rooms, several furniture pieces in them, and we don't know where everything is. I mean, to, to try and be bold, this is what was happening. So we needed someone um, definitely who can, we can trust and is ready to, to take uh, an inventory of the whole building and to make sure that we know where everything is. So that's the special situation. You're absolutely right. This is not something, it's not something um, that you would call normal, define what normal is. Again, yeah, you're right. Um, but this is sort of a, a very unique situation that CU is in. But it has a clear purpose. And I think that's, that's I, I won't dominate the conversation, but I think that's a positive from, from so many perspectives and really important. Thank you. I think, I think we, we have, have one more question. question. Um, go ahead. Piotr. Thanks, Lewis. Um, I mean, first of all, Natalia, congratulations on a very um, detailed and carefully thought through um, process. Um, um, I wonder if I can look at it from an awkward perspective, though. I, it's, it's such a detailed process that you went through. Is there a danger? of almost underlining that difference of your, your, your mm. colleague in the eyes of everybody else. Because every, every step you're taking is, is, is almost showing they have to be treated differently. And um, I wonder, is there a danger of almost exacerbating that difference? Um, in a sense, of course, we're all different in one way or another. Uh, we all have assumptions about what is acceptable um, behavior. Uh, and in some ways, you know, maybe it shouldn't be just about one colleague who is identified as having a, a disability. You know, it's, it's maybe something more general about what is acceptable behavior in an organization, you know, using inclusive language. And in some ways, when, when I was thinking about what, what your process was, I thought this is a, an ideal induction process, in fact, for anybody. Um, uh, you know, um, introducing them um, to colleagues, telling everybody what their work is going to be, saying what the um, um, what, what acceptable behaviour is, even things like knocking on doors. Not everybody, not everybody knows when they should knock on doors or or, or not. And induction processes are the sort of things that in busy organisations very often are ignored. People come in, and everybody says, "Well, we're too too busy to do a proper induction." Um, and you know they go through the you know the first six months a year, not actually realizing that, that sometimes their behaviour can be unacceptable. Um, anyway, I throw that out there. I wonder what everybody else thinks. Thank you so much for your question. It's 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 great to see. It's it's so great to see um, that I'm in a safe place. And and the way you you uh, phrase that question again. Um, I don't know if I can say it here, uh, but I think since I tried to make sure that uh, I didn't um, say who the name of the person so that he may not be um, identified, we are talking about a colleague um, who is 60% disabled according to the Austrian system. Mm. Um, that is, um, I think, um, a, a, a different, um, a, a, the first case, so when, when you talk about induction, the first case we had, I have uh, collected some experience dealing with students in the past, but the students who came to CEU um, had a different degree of disability. So when, when students come to CEU, um, I think, uh, the, the difference cannot even be noticed. And we make sure that we build up structures where this is not noticeable at all. And we try, even with students, I, I try to make sure that we create a, a flexible environment, not only for colleagues, but to try and make sure that inclusivity means that instead of having a student coming in and trying to integrate. And, and when I define by Chinese integrate means that I'm trying to put the community member into a very rigid structure and trying to expect the colleague or the student to try and do their best to, to adopt 
to the culture that's existing. I want to avoid that. I want to, my purpose is to try and create um, an environment when, uh, where community members arrive and they feel that they don't need to adopt to the standards that are there, but, but this is a flexible environment and they can be included. That's, uh, I don't know whether I can explain that. And this was obviously my first project. And we try to map it out very well, especially with, with colleagues. Uh, I think this, this was special attention. But uh, after we evaluate uh, the weaknesses and strengths of this project, I think it's your comment is highly valued and, and will be taken into consideration. We can adopt it to all the onboarding processes that all the colleagues who come to CEU will feel welcome and they feel that they can be included. I hope I managed to answer your question. Yeah, so please that's go brilliant, ahead. Natalia. No, no, it's great. And I think um, I'm really keen to put everyone into breakout groups, but I think that tension around that balance between kind of the equity, the, the kind of complete tailored um, is, is well made. I think it's, a, it's, it's an interesting one to balance. I'm going to put everyone in some breakout rooms just so everyone gets a chance to speak and, and maybe unpack 